Hello and welcome to VIP Access. Super honored to be here for yet another week. I am taking you behind the scenes at the launch of Formigani's new report titled Kenya in 2030, Young Voices on Future Scenarios and Contraception. This is an amazing report. It's already out. You can go to formligani.kenya.co.ke to download this report to read about it. Today, we also officially launched the Ideathon University Challenge by Formligani. If you want to know what that means, you can simply go to the website and also download a form, an application form, and you'll get to know more about what you need to do to participate in the challenge. However, let me take you behind the scenes and just show you how the event went down. It was really amazing. We had a series of panel discussions right here. We had the students asking questions left, right, and center, and uh, we answered all their questions. So a lot of you are wondering, what is this report about? What is um, Young Voices on Future Scenarios and Contraception? What are these scenarios? There are four different scenarios in the report. Upendo Leo, Utegemeo, Ukaidi and Uwakilishi. And according to us right here at Formigani, the optimum and ideal scenario is Uwakilishi. That is why the university challenge is actually based on the Uwakilishi scenario. We want you, if you're a student outside there, to read this report and let us know your best solutions for Kenya to achieve this Uwakilishi scenario. As simple as that. And if you want more information, you can just read the report and it will give you a glimpse of the state at which we are at right now when you talk about young people in Kenya, when you talk about issues of um, unemployment, health sector, family planning sector, and so many others. So I'm so happy to be here and um, please allow me to show you how everything went behind the scenes. Come with me. What we realized at Formigani is that, that Kenyans have noticed. Kenyans wanted a platform to talk about family planning, to talk about contraception. Based on the hashtag Formigani, if you check online right now, a lot of conversations were started which are never ending, which are continuing. There has been a strong and wide youth voice which is telling us that people are listening and more importantly, they are engaging with us. So since 2017, we can actually say that Form Nigani has been on the, on the radar in regards to what Kenyans are talking about in terms of their need for planning. And now we turn our attention to Kenya's plan and what Kenya's, plans, Kenya's plan means for the young people. Um, and if you consider the fact that young people are not just the majority, young people are the population now that is going to reimagine the country, that's going to take the country forward, that's going to ensure that the country is able to stand and hold in its two feet, despite even the debt conversation we are having. But young people are the population. The initiative is about um, increasing contraception, contraception access um, in, in an equitable way because we understand that that is a central um, theme for our development going forward. How would you summarize this report? Like, if I'm a young person watching right now, you know, why do I need to grab um, this report? Why do I need to go to formnigani.co.ke, um, formniganikenya.co.ke to, to read this report? So uh, this report uh, gives um, the staggering truth of what will happen in case uh, all these scenarios get to play out. Okay. So uh, what it gives you is gives you the reality of what will happen. And what it does is that it informs us on how we can get to the people-centric uh, scenario. So uh, as a youth, you need to read it so that the choices we make as government, when we read it, it helps us, helps the government or informs the government on how to support. What about you, Aisha? I think uh, the young people especially need to read it because we make the population, I mean, we are 70, 74% of the population. It means that in the near future, we will be the one leading this country. Yeah, so we need to know what will happen when we get there. So because the report has the data, it has all the findings, it has what the group, 
what, what is in the grassroots. I mean, it contains all that. So as young people, we need to read this. We need to be informed. So I'm actually curious to know what you think about it because this report is advocating for um, contraception to be a central part of decision making in this country, especially to matters pertaining national development. So what is your opinion on this report? Uh, it's a piece of work that I would say every government official should have a look into. Because if you look at um, the findings of the report and you look at what the young people are saying, we're saying 74% of the youth in Kenya, um, of the population in Kenya is youth. We're saying 77% of the voters in the IBC register of 2017 are youth. That means the youth are controlling this nation. The youth are the ones who have the bigger say in the country. So if this is what they want, if they feel contraceptives should be part of the conversation, or even as the the generation they should embrace it and I think the, the main thing that uh, for those who uh, who will look at the, uh, at the report and those who will see the report should think about is changing uh, the view and perception of contraceptives as it is and what what we should be looking at because the data shows we do talk about sex as much as we don't want to admit, we don't outrightly speak about it, we do have those conversations, whether it is informal or not. Now, we should make this conversation more formal. We are a society that leadership, uh, for the leaders, they've been given that leadership. For them, it's expected that they should be able to have the best interest of the country. And if that best interest is involves having contraceptives in, in um, as part of their priority, then they should make it a priority as, as soon as possible. <laughs> What are some of the staggering statistics in the report that um, m will make people know that the time to make these right decisions is now and not tomorrow? The reality of our country with the youth bulge is the fact that we are having younger people who don't subscribe to those traditional values. So they are having sex way younger, out of marriage, and in a sense, because of lack of information, a lot of the parents are not also equipping them with the right information, it means that they are misadvised. So what is happening then is that a lot of the pregnancies or the population is increasing, but a big number of those children cannot be taken care of, like I said earlier. And so the alarming part of it is how do we handle this reality that we are in? And, and then um, not in a sense... Um, and how do we also handle the sensitivities of our cultural issues, like um, issues of abortion, issues of um, same-sex marriages, because those are realities within our societies. And this big tension will not be helped by not having the conversation. Thank you so much, Katindi. I mean, great, great job. You're saying it's not difficult, but it's also not so easy. I mean, especially when it comes to the stats, you know, you really have to get it right. And whatever you collected from the people, you really have to represent it well in, in, in the context of it. So uh, for me, like congratulations to you and everyone who was part of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And well, if people can download the report from hashtag from Nigani, Yes. Or the website for Migani, um, Kenya .ke. Um Thank you so much, Katindi. Welcome, and I hope to have more conversations with you. And you yes, me too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.